Hello guys and welcome back to TSN or the Sasuke Nerds and today we are joined by a very special guest. Um, there's quite a few labels. He's a food blogger, he's a former K1 fighter. On top of all of that, he was involved in uh, Pro Sportsman Number 1 and Sasuke. Please welcome Nicholas Pettis. How are you doing? Hi guys. <laughs> oh man, when you put it like that, yeah, there's a lot I've done. It's kind of cool to remember some of these things. Yeah, of course, of course. Happy to be here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Sit back and enjoy the ride. <laughs> of course. So let's uh, let's get into some of the questions. Man, Kini Kubanzge, which is the, the number one sportsman muscle show from TBS TV show. That was crazy back in the day, I'll tell you that, though. Um, it was a big show. Like, they were calling in, like, big athletes from all over the world to do crazy challenges. Oh, yeah. I, I know all about that. I'm very big fan very big fan i know mike tyson was involved um michael jordan it was very yeah. very interesting yeah but yeah to start to start things off um how were you able to compete in the show pro sportsman number one and by extension it's kind of sister show sasuke in the first place um okay so i think I think um, I hadn't started fighting professionally at the time, but my senpai, Francisco Filio, was asked because he was fighting in K1, and he had knocked out Andy Hoog in his first fight in the K1, which was quite an amazing feature to do. And um, he was invited to go to the rehearsals for the TV show for the, um, the number one muscle man. And I was uh, kind of like just tagging along. And so we got to rehearse some of the movements. For example, the uh, the barrel throw where you got to throw a ten kilo barrel over your head, um, over this yeah backwards over your head and flip it over this thing. And um, he was having trouble doing it, and I was like, dude, that can't be that hard. Like it's it's easy, right? So because I knew the show from watching it on TV, but he hadn't seen it before, so I felt a very strong connection to the show, and I was really happy to be there at the rehearsals. Anyway, I picked up the um, the barrel and I tossed it over the uh, the wall quite easily. And the producer was like, wait, who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and then we went on to the next exercise, and there was something I had to do. Uh, he had to do again. He wasn't so, he wasn't so, I don't know, talented at it. And then I got a chance at it, and then I did really well. And the guy's like, okay, can I put you on the show? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, awesome. uh, yeah, guerrilla tactics. I, I made my way in the, through the back door, basically. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that was uh, Higuchi-san. Is the guy's the producer? Uh, he made he ran that show for many many years and ended up doing something called the Muscle Musical, where they had all these former athletes that were performing in a, in a dance musical kind of thing, um, which I was also invited to do and I turned it down flat because there I I cannot dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know all about that. That was uh, a lot of the people from Muscle Musical were involved in that sort of stuff. Um, very interesting very very interesting yeah i think the the hardest thing for 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 professional athletes or or top athletes like olympic athletes or something like that is really to like find their their niche market for going on to the second career um for me personally it was also very hard because uh fighting was something that i felt was something i dedicated my life to very hardly and um i didn't want to water it down and by saying that i'd I didn't want to have to like deal with, um, I'm going to sound a little bit snobbish here, but I didn't want to deal with normal people's problems when it comes to fighting uh, <laughs> because I dealt with my own problems for so long. So I didn't really want to like, get back into that and then have to somehow compromise what I felt was a was an art, uh, as in the word of martial arts. And so um, when I finished, I also was happy to be able to find this uh, CrossFit thing and um, like yeah pivot my career from something that i was very um hmm, high horsed on uh to something that is completely uh, down to earth as in something different from what i used to do so yeah i understand the, the struggles that other athletes go through and i think the higuchi at the time he was able to uh, create opportunities for a lot of athletes um to uh not catapult but help them start second careers and also get into the uh, entertainment industry on uh, various levels so I think he did a really good job on, on really like 
taking care of athletes to the next generation kind of thing. Yeah, man, it's awesome. Really is, really, really is. I haven't right, thought of so... things in a long time, so it's kind of cool to go back and dig dig in. <laughs> of course, of course. I'm I'm very grateful that you were actually willing to talk about this in the first place, considering it happened in the year 2000, 2001, around then. Yeah. So uh, my next uh, my next question for you is, uh, from what you remember, um, yeah. how was your experience on the uh, the Sasuke course? How did it go? Oh, in Sasuke. Um, it didn't go so well. I fell in the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, we. I'll tell you a story, though, which is kind of sad. And also, for me, it's very timely because randomly I'm... I'm working on my second part of the Blue-Eyed Samurai, my book, which is my um, my chronicle di diary kind of thing that I've been writing. Um, and part two involves uh, recently, actually, like I think last week, I was writing just about exactly when, when that happened, and that was in 2001. No, wait, that was 2000. Yeah, 2000. In, um, in, in August, uh, on the, the 24th of August, um, a very famous K1 fighter called Andy Hu passed away from uh, acute strike of uh, leukemia, which is cancer in the white blood cells, basically. And he 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 he, he was my biggest idol. My yeah, I was he was my idol. I really looked up to him, and he was a mentor and a senpai. And I had the opportunity to share time with him, and also um, really look at him for inspiration for fighting. And suddenly he passed away, and I was on the set for Sasuke in Midoriyama Stadium, which is about an hour and a half uh, car ride outside of Tokyo. And it's a beautiful stadium where they have um, big fields with, with, with big tall trees surrounding uh, this great big grass area, which they've completely converted into the Sasuke um, set, um, which is huge. And uh, there are trucks out there. There are other cars. There are other famous people out there that kind of get to pre-check pre the course the day before. And um, I was standing there on set trying to figure out how to roll down the barrel. And I completed the barrel and was trying to go for the next uh, big jump run and loop where you have to run up and catch the ledge and crawl over uh, to get through the first stage. And uh, the producer comes over to me and he says, look, Nick, I think you should, uh, you should go back to Tokyo because I think Andy Hoop just passed away. And I was just like, this is impossible. He's like 35 years old. There's no way he can pass away. I was like 27 or something. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it was really surreal. I just remember that one moment where, where, where it kind of sunk in and I looked around myself and it was really quiet and I saw the wind and the trees and, um, and it was just one of those moments in your life where, which, which everything gets captured and frozen kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, I was just writing about that in, in my book last week kind of thing. So it's kind of weird that you're asking these questions right now. Oh, damn. That's yeah, that's kind of like the moment that really stands out for me about that whole experience. Oh, that's crazy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. I I couldn't imagine how you felt at the time. Yeah, it was um it was quite the uh it was quite the uh experience to to have to lose someone like that and I was fortunate enough to be able to 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 have been close enough to him somehow um in many ways connected to him. My life has been very interconnected to that person and um yeah, I was I was fortunate enough to be able to carry his coffin out, and uh, yeah, it was a very emotional time there. And then the year after that, I won the the Japanese championship and was basically called out as the next Blue Eyed Samurai. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, of course. Next up, um, kind of segueing into a similar kind of question. Um, by extension, how was your experience competing in? The uh, 2000 edition of Pro Sportsman Number One. How was the experience overall? You know, well, at the time I just started fighting K1, and my career was just really starting to bloom. I had shown, um, or, uh, like I think the year earlier there, where um, I got in on the show, how athletic I was, and um, the producers had high hopes for me, and it was kind of a spin-off on what was going on in the K1 back in those days. We were on primetime TV and. There was a lot of focus on us. It was really very different from what it is today. Um, kind of like I could imagine how it is to be a UFC fighter back in, like right now maybe, if you're like a top one. That's how we felt like we were in Japan. Um, 
and I hadn't really accomplished anything spectacular in the K1 at the time. Um, so being on a, a a big show like that, which is like a six hour TV show that runs on uh, the New Year holidays where everyone is just sitting home and watching TV, kind of really catapulted my my name in Japan as, as, as a personality and, and also as a fighter, obviously, because people remember me for that. Um, and I think that year, um, Sammy Sosa was either playing uh, baseball in Japan or he was visiting or they had just brought him over for that show. But I remember him coming on the show and being like uh, this superstar in baseball at the time, just hitting all the home runs. And uh, we got to hang out at the back of the set and just sat and talked and chilled and played some soccer. And, you know, because it's a it's a literally it's a 20 hour shoot. It starts at nine o'clock in the morning and it doesn't finish until like two, three o'clock in the morning uh, the next day. And it just goes on like all day long. So you're kind of in and out off the set all day long. And, and there's so much time to just chill and talk and stuff like that. And he was a really nice guy. But at the time, he was like number one baseball player in the world. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's really awesome. I I will concede it is a very 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 popular show. That kind of genre, apparently, according to yeah. um, Japanese TV statistics, the most recent Sasuke, for example, a third of Japan watched. It's it's crazy because you placed seventh. I think you won I, one of the events. I placed- seventh and i won i i think that year i won the uh the muscle pull or whatever you have this harness and you have to run and push a button um where you run two people opposite of each other so the guy that gets to the end he gets to push the button and whoever pushes the button first wins i won that one um i placed really well in a whole bunch of other things and i got i remember i got all these really cool presents i got like a, a water bed i got like a big tv set i got cash um yeah no it was really cool and then um we shoot the show somewhere in december and it's aired you know um on the first or second of january which is like the best time for tv to be to be watched in japan and everyone watches it it's it's super popular there are two things you watch in japan on you know any no there are three things that you watch over those holidays here in japan and it, it used to be either the sasuke uh, or the kinigo ichiban, uh, the, yeah, kinigo ichiban uh, or it was uh the kohaku which is on uh, new year's eve where you watch all the singers like perform their songs, um, and then there's the uh, the ekiden, which these the the marathon from all the the, the, uh, the university students. So you're either stuck on one of these three programs, and they're not all the same on at the same time. So depending on what day in your holiday or um, you're kind of ending up watching some of this for sure. So yeah, everyone watches it. Um, I remember people asking me for an autograph and and uh, a picture and stuff. And they didn't know that I was a K1 fighter. They were just like, oh, you're the guy from Sasuke. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I was very fortunate um, because I got along. I spoke also Japanese uh, uh, back then also. And um, it was very easy to communicate with the, with the producers and stuff. And they, they had a show, um, I think, a year or two after uh, during the summer holidays where it was a mini version of a Sasuke kind of set. And I had to play a actor that was taking down the the participants of the show. So they basically, it was me and uh, Shane Kosugi, which is Kane Kosugi's younger brother. Um, and and we, we were we were hired to basically uh, hunt down the, the people that were participating in this thing. And they had to try and get through the obstacle course. And we were the ones trying to throw them down uh, into the water below us. So that was... Uh, it was quite the summer vacation. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. It's called. It was yeah. called Escape. It was called Escape. Something like that. Yeah. You yeah. were like uh, you were like a Terminator. Yeah, exactly. We were we were like the bad guys, and and man, we got right into it, like jumping and then like catching guys that were running, they were trying to run across our our path, and just like jumping and, and tossing them in the water. It was really cool. Shane and I were still friends today. He's a really cool dude. Cool dude too. Oh, yeah. that's awesome! That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was actually the same studio that was built in the same the same Midoriyama Stadium. Well, it's not stadium, but studio uh, out somewhere in the outskirts of Tokyo. Oh yeah, that studio pretty involved. Pretty involved. It was involved in the uh, production of like say Takeshi's Castle. That one was yeah. pretty big. Um, Takeshi's Castle was huge. 
Oh yeah, it was it was massive after the uh that, yeah, that show just set the stage, but it was kind of the same similar setup for what we were doing with that one with Shane Kosugi. It was it was it was nuts. We had like 100 people or 200 people and they would send them in 3 4 by at a time and then they had to run through the obstacle course and we just basically had to throw them in the water. Yeah, the round was called like Alcatraz, I think. Yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Like that. that was really cool. Cool to be part of somehow. I guess I should ask cuz this is on the list. Were you allowed to stay after your run in Sasuke? Uh, yes. But the thing is when there were two or three different kind of categories for people that were selected for the show. Uh, the one uh, category, which would be the um, uh, anyone could like just send in their profile video or their profile and they could get um, called in for an audition for it. And if they performed well in the audition, they would get a spot. Um, it was 100 people every time. Uh, the last 10 or 15 slots of the 100 people were either someone famous or someone interesting, either a singer or an athlete or whatever it was, or it was someone who had actually uh, performed really well in Sasuke previously and been on, like, almost finishing it and getting to the top. Um, randomly, they would put people like me in there um which is kind of like a wild card uh just to keep the, the the production value of it i think interesting enough so that you don't change the channel too quickly <laughs> uh because a lot of people they just like they, they get up there and they fall like straight away they get on the first rolling thing and they fall off straight into the water um even some of the famous people and athletes do that also uh but they they kind of spaced us out a lot but someone like me i was famous enough that I was in like the end of it, so you're you're kind of stuck there for, you know, the 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 first couple of hours and really just watching people, um, yeah, not pass anything, and so if you want to stay and you want to watch until the end, you can. But it's like a, again, it's like a twelve hour shoot. It it, it goes on forever. Yeah, deep, yeah. deep into the nighttime, of course. Yeah, and it's because they do rehearsals and they they. They set up cameras and then they set up. There's a lot going on where they have to change set and stuff like that. And most people just say thank you and then they leave. But there's a stage. Um, there's a place on the stage where you can you can sit and watch and stuff. And and sometimes it's it's kind of cool to sit there and watch because they do clip outs of you if you're sitting and watching and cheering on someone you you know. Um, but yeah, so some people use it for that, or they used to use it for that. Of course, of course. Uh, Literally, I was too big uh, as a heavyweight, uh, you know, K1 fighter to actually perform well in those kind of things because you got to be super agile and like the wall where you have to like put your hands on the side like this and your feet and you have to go through. I, I have no idea how people can do that um, <laughs> but because I've tried it and it's just like it, it's, it, it, it does not happen. My shoes fall off, my hands slip or... I'm just not um, strong enough to hold myself up in a position like that. But most of the other things are crawling and climbing and hanging and stuff like that and jumping. I'm, I'm okay with them. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Of course, yeah. they, gotta, they gotta spread out a bunch of the... Back to the point about the uh, famous competitors. Of course, they had to spread it out amongst the 100 because, you know, they gotta make good yeah. TV. I'll tell you what, though. They use uh, university students for, for volunteer staff on set. And the university students is from ma ma mainly a university called um, Nittaidai. Uh, so Nittaidai University is a sports university, really famous for having a very strong uh, judo team, what I've actually filmed um, for NHK World on a show called Samurai Spirit, where we did a sumo version there. Uh, not a sumo version, a, a judo version. And... Um, this university is probably like the, 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 the top of sports universities in Japan. And these kids, I kid you not, these kids, they crush the Sasuke set like nothing else. They're like, oh, they'll, they'll pull pull out someone over and say, I'm looking at this thing and going, how do I do this? And then they go, oh, oh, I'll Ken Goku. And they'll call some kid over and like, yeah, he's like, yeah, just show him how to do it. And then he'll just crush it. And I was like, how? <laughs> So there's a lot of people that are talented out there that just never got a chance on the show, um, but they wanted to be part of it somehow. Um, so the, uh, those students were, were really good, actually, very talented. Yeah, something 
in Ninja Warrior and in sports in general is that uh, a lot of the kids are insanely talented. Insanely talented. Yeah. You love to see it. Well, it's hard to say like who's really going to be the best, right? But, but then you see like the top guys; they're really good at performing. Like the guys that really dedicate themselves to something like this is they're they're they like built sets in their houses and like practiced on the bigger and, and the more difficult like things, you know. And you and you watch the whole build up of this story. There's this one guy they used to call him Mister Sasuke. Uh, he just never gave up on his dream on, on on doing this thing. And he got older and older, and and he almost finished it every year. He almost finished it, and then he. would He'd go back and build a bigger set in his house and he'd practice more and he'd really be, get um, emotionally invested in this guy. Uh, but eventually, I think he just gave up and, 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 and said, okay, I've had enough because I'm never going to finish this set. And every time he thought he had it, they would change the set a little bit and then he'd be thrown off guard and he wouldn't finish it. It's just, I felt so sorry for this guy. I think I watched this guy's career for like 10, 15 years on every year and you're just going, come on, man, you can do it. <laughs> no, he still does it. He still competes. Really? Oh, yeah. he still does it. Oh, man, that guy's nuts. He's in his late yeah. 50s, but he still competes, and he coaches um, some younger athletes. He's trying to right. get them to win, too. <laughs> yeah, that guy, Mr. Sasuke. <laughs> the hustle out of that man is unparalleled. Uh, and he, it's he, look, I don't even think they pay him to be on the show. So this is pure for the love of the sport of it. It's really just for the challenge of it. Um yeah, he doesn't do any other TV shows. He, that's all he does. That one show twice a year. I think there's one in the summer and one in the winter, and, and that's it. It's surprising. His name is, according to, uh, from what I've heard from some people, it's gotten quite a ways around Japan, from what I've heard. It's, uh, Katsumi Yamada is quite a famous person. That's right. Yeah, Yamada-san. Yeah, he's famous. Everyone knows him, but he's not made a career out of being, you know... <laughs> It's just passion for him, yeah. Of unfortunately, because does... the dedication he's put into that show is is unrivaled, like for real. He does. He so... should be having a big, big paycheck every month. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, Works. I just don't know how, but he should. Works as a steel worker, so he's getting the paycheck mm. somehow. I'm pretty sure. So, why are you so fascinated by Sasuke? What is your passion? The fascination that I have had with Sasuke started when I was a very young kid. I was maybe four or five years old. And I watched mm. the uh, G4 version. It was basically a dub of the original tournaments with uh, lackluster subtitles and some guy recapping the tournaments. Dave Wittenberg was his name. Um mm. That was where it all started. It kind of spiraled all there, or all from there. Um, that's how I. Uh, that's how I got into Sportsman Number One. It. Uh, it was closely related to Sasuke. It was. I think it was produced by the same studio, Monster Nine. I think was its name. Yeah. But no, I. I've recently become quite a fan of that show. I once uh, helped fake a Japanese game show for American TV hosts. <laughs> <laughs> really? True story. They tried to get him in on all the big uh, game shows they, they could find here in Japan. But because he was a TV host from America that they didn't know who was, they were like, yeah, not really. They were not interested. They weren't biting. So no one gave him a chance. But we had a big budget. And um, we basically uh, rented a big studio. Um got in 200 extras to be an audience and um just like fake the game show and it was actually a lot of fun oh that's awesome that's awesome yeah he was really good he got really like really into it this this host i forget his name now it's a long time ago but man he, he was like really wild there was like a a live octopus that you had to like i don't know bite in his mouth and carry around this like little set or whatever but he got right into it and really <laughs> <laughs> got into character quite impressively actually well, that's crazy that's, like, I, I learned something about american entertainment that day <laughs> yeah something about american tv is that you can make quite what's the word the profit the living i don't know there's quite the following for a show yeah. where you eat gross stuff like that yeah 
it, it was just funny. I mean, his 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 dedication to his craftsmanship as as a uh, entertainer was was really like um, kind of mind blowingly uh, experience for me because at that time I was just a fighter and I hadn't had a lot of experience in in being and understanding what an entertainer is or does. Uh, but uh, working the crowd, getting everyone excited, like working the camera, you know, not being afraid to put yourself out there. I just feel like I, I learned a lot from that guy just from working with him for about a week or so. Yeah, no, it was really a good learning experience for me. Of course, of course, of course. What I thought was uh, interesting about the the number one uh, muscle uh, show was that they were able to pull in different athletes from different sports. So, for example, in the tug of war uh, that I had to do against um, Kaguchi-san, which is a uh, the first Japanese uh, uh, American football player to be signed, not in America. I think he played somewhere else in an American football, but as a professional player. Um, and he looked like a little meatball. Like, he was a little bit shorter than me, but just, like, massive, right? Like, you would imagine an American football player as a, as a linebacker, or he looked like kind of... Um, and so I went up against him in the tug of war and it was really hard. And I was just thinking, man, as I'm doing it, because it went on for a long, long time. And I, I felt like I almost had him, but then I didn't. And he didn't want to give up. And I was just like going back and forth in this thing. And I just thought, you know what? This is taking too long. I got too many other exercises and, and things to go through for the rest of the day. So I'm just going to give this to him. I just, I, I, yeah, I, I, I failed in that one, unfortunately. Uh, but after that, he was so messed up from from fighting for the, everything he had that he didn't perform very well after that. But he actually ended up um, performing pretty well on that show for quite some years, uh, placing top. I think he won it once or twice, and that was basically his salary for that year. Was as a, as a as he was making more money on the show uh, in prize money than he was in his salary as a, as an American football player. Oh yeah, winning winning that, you'd win what? Five million yen, I want to say five million. Which I think the first prize is about that, but then every event you win, they give you three thousand dollars. So if you're winning a couple of the events, you can rack the money up there. And if you come second or third in some of the events, they give you like really. They used to give you really good presents, like you know, I got a water bed and different things. It was really nice. Travel tickets they also would give away, oh, uh, yeah. but the the cool thing was really the money, like to actually get the money. And then they ended up making these small cards, um, and they sold those like like baseball cards. Oh so yeah, they had like the the actual cards. And I've had a lot of fans come up to me and ask for autographs on those cards from the the number one uh, muscle ranking. And that's crazy. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine quite the living being made off sportsmen, uh, including what's his face. Uh, Kane Kusugi, who um pretty sure he won like five of them. Imagine at least. Yeah. Imagine. He was extremely talented and gifted as an athlete and um he was perfect for it because he was very well balanced, uh as in he was fast and quick enough to, to do some things. And he was physically strong enough to do to get away with it with some of the things that um we cried the strength of it. Um uh, but yeah. And it's really strange because he's kind of like in the famous people bracket because his dad was like the American Ninja. Um, Shokusugi, which is really famous back in the 80s, 90s for doing like ninja movies in America. And so he grew up, him and his brother Shane, they grew up doing martial arts as a performing thing, not as real martial arts, but they would do gymnastics and um, uh, sword fighting and, you know, all, all that stuff that you do for action movies, basically. And so his dad had moved to Japan uh, at one point and opened up a, a, a an action movie star kind of slash uh, martial arts school. Um, and those guys were working there and teaching and, and doing stuff like that. So they came in super athletic, both of them. The older brother, uh, Kane, was w w much stronger than his younger brother. But, man, he did really well. He basically had a career out of that for those years. And, and that spiraled in him to doing other commercials and stuff like that. And... Um, yeah, he's not very, not very entertaining as a personality or anything. But he did a couple of movies and he did a couple of show, shows. Uh, but it, basically, his career was run through um, doing those uh, Kinika shows. Yeah, of course, cars were the big prizes too, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, they got cars. That was a big thing back in the day. I think they had the cars in the the Coliseum. I think, if I remember correctly. 
Yeah, the Colosseum was done and shot out in um, in Makuhari, which is about 20, 25 kilometers outside of Tokyo on the coastline in Chiba, which is a big, there's a big stadium out there that has those concerts and like, you know, expos and stuff like that. And so they basically build that Colosseum there every time. And that set was also massive. I mean, it's just, it went on like all day long. 20, 20 some hours plus. Yeah. He was good. He's a really nice guy too. Really chill. I guess uh, with the newest tournament around the corner, I guess I should probably ask, do you still keep up with uh, Sasuke nowadays? Uh, no. To be honest, I have not watched Japanese TV in years, although I live in Japan. Uh Netflix happened, Hulu happened, then YouTube happened. I got way more interested in YouTube and stuff. Uh, the fact that you could go on YouTube and you can find someone interesting that you you like to follow, and you know they keep uh, pumping out content. That is, yeah, I'm, I'm also because I started a YouTube channel called Junk Food Japan. I was um, using, uh, I've been using a lot of time actually looking at other YouTubers and seeing what's what works and what doesn't work and you know kind of like studying the market uh, and so i understood i understand now that youtube is a is a platform that you go for entertainment and uh i never saw it as that until i started this channel so it was kind of cool of course yeah unfortunately yeah i don't watch it but it could be fun to go back and watch it when is this tournament coming up um i believe the 27th of december mm I believe it's going to pop up on, I don't know if you know about this subscription service, uh, it's called Parabi. Um, yeah. It pops up on there every year after um, after the broadcast happens, so if you miss mm. it, then you should see it there. Yeah, I might check that out, actually. Um, that could be fun. The 20, yeah, so... I've got a friend coming in from Holland fighting on the 28th, so I'll be busy with that. And he wants me to come work in his corner. Um, and then we've got something on the 27th also. But yeah, no, Paravi, I know that. I've actually got that app. So it could be could be fun to go back in and watch some of that stuff. I wonder what kind of athletes are out there doing it now. Dude, get this. King Kasugi came back. No way. After <laughs> 20, no, 19 years. Really? Yeah, he's been gone. That's nuts. I was just chatting with his brother the other day. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm going to ask him about that. Maybe I could go and maybe I should come back and do a comeback in that show just for fun. Yeah, make the big yeah. comeback. The old star cast. Because that's something I can do. Like, if it's fighting, I don't want to do it. Because I don't, I've got my two, my two hips replaced. But um, anything athletic with strength and stuff, I'm still good to go. So that could be fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming back okay that i want to watch tournament number 40 it's tournament 40 that they're on now did they did they have a break from it was it shut down for a while because i hear there was a big injury at one point and someone got uh, a big neck injury because something fell on his neck oh yeah so i think they were shut down for a while. interesting yeah um but no it's like a whole new era of the show it's crazy do they do the same exercises? Um, some of the obstacles you may or may not actually know. There's like one obstacle that you might see that you might recognize. It's the uh, the warped wall, you know, the uh, the curved wall that you run up. That one. Yeah. Yeah, that's no. That... <laughs> to get to that one, you have to hold on to the barrel and not fall in the water. <laughs> oh, the barrel! They moved to the uh, the second stage, and it makes you dizzy. Oh, interesting. Interesting, yeah. The curved wall, that's pretty high, actually. I don't remember if I could clear it or not. I think I did in practice, but not on the show. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you didn't quite make it there, if I remember correctly. No, no I fell in the water <laughs> very valiantly. The uh, <laughs> not-so-clean water. Not-so-clean. Oh, that, that water's dirty, but I mean, it's just, they've just basically dug a hole and then put water in there, so, I mean, it's not like it's stale water or anything, it's just water. Yeah, I've heard uh, quite the testimonial that uh, I think this other YouTuber, um, 
competed, fell in the water, had to take a shower after it was uh, not the best water. <laughs> well, they they have a studio right there, so they got like clean showers for for most of us there, so it's no big deal. Of course, I've done Spartan races and other things where you also have to crawl through the mud, and, and you know it's it's uh, it's just part of the game. Sometimes you got to bite down and uh, dig deep. All right, I have a I have a pretty big one. Um, quite interested to hear the answer. Um, do you have the uh, the sportsman jersey or the uh, the Sasuke number tag? You know. No, I don't. But I think I still have some of the cards, the sports cards. Uh, I was just looking on my shelf earlier because I think. I have them here uh, somewhere. Someone gave uh, there's a there was a, a very special card, like a golden platinum card one, which is very rare. I don't know how many they made back in the day, but someone actually gave me one of those, and um, it's somewhere over there. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, they're kind of collectibles, right? I mean, sometimes you've I've seen them pop up on on you know uh, sites where they sell stuff like that. Which I kind of feel is a bit strange, but I could understand why that would be a thing. It's the yeah. same reason they sell like baseball cards or Pokemon cards. It's for that reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. I've been meaning to get a like pack of them, but kind of need a, a proxy service or something so that it can make it internationally from Japan to the United States where I am. Yeah, man, that's a huge problem. I'm just in the process of importing six uh, fitness bicycles from America to Japan. And I don't know why it's so complicated. <laughs> this, well, I don't understand why they can't just send them to me directly. They have to go through some service that picks up the bicycles or gets the bicycles sent to them and then they ship them over. Anyway, there's a lot of moving parts, which is really annoying. I thought the world would be easier to buy stuff from internationally. Being a fan of this show in the United States is rather tough, seeing as, uh, you know, I think the merch site for Ninja Warrior nowadays, it only ships to Japan, and Parabi is very strict about, uh, you know, making sure you are in Japan when you subscribe to it. I think you need a Japanese credit card, and you also need to be straight in japan vpms uh they really don't work in general yeah. interesting i have yet to explore the vpn world but i'm thinking of it recently a lot because i don't know uh american tv is kind of cool <laughs> yeah it saves lives when you're on netflix or hulu yeah I mean, but I'm happy with what I get here in Japan from Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that. I actually don't watch Hulu anymore. I don't know how to log into the account anymore. Uh, but Netflix is more than enough. And then YouTube is, is basically where I get my my most um, yeah, entertainment from. Yeah, it's okay. Me neither. <laughs> All right. So we've kind of reached the end of the questions. But before before we go, um, yeah. is there anyone that you want to shout out? Um, my brother. <laughs> if I can, uh, he just, yeah, my brother just had his second hip replaced a couple of days ago. Um, and, and I've gone through the same experience with having the hip replaced and I know how good it can get once you've gotten through the, the initial uh, rehab and stuff like that. So I'd like to say, uh, yeah, I love you brother and, uh, good luck with the recovery. And I'm sure that you'll be doing your Sasuke movement soon enough. He actually works as a tree cutter. So he climbs in big trees and, and chops them down with chainsaws so he needs to be very flexible and, and strong like that yeah oh yeah maybe you can shout out your channel not like not like you need to you have uh, a lot more subscribers than us here at tsn but you can plug it anyway because uh you know while you're here yeah, it's okay. uh yeah if you uh want to watch some food stories from japan go ahead and check out the uh, junk food japan channel that i host uh we have a lot of fun with it we just aired a show last night and uh, we basically upload twice a month and uh, also sometimes add in some shorts recently to come up with a Q&A uh, about different things. It's kind of cool to uh, do this channel because I hosted um, a show on NHK World for seven years um, called Imagination, uh, which was about Japanese anime and, and, and manga and, uh, and video games and stuff like that. 
And uh, a lot of the people that used to watch me on NHK World have found me on the Junk Food Japan thing. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of cool to like know that the same fans are, are still tagging along. So thank you guys for watching. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you all for watching um, this very special video. Thank you. Thank you once again, Nicholas, for uh, being willing to talk about this show that you were involved in all these years ago. Of course. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Um, I'm impressed and I, that I didn't actually know that the show still goes on, but to, to see that someone like you and there are still other people out there really interested in, you know, knowing the history of all the, uh, the performances by all the other athletes out there is, is quite the amazing thing. It's humbling to know that people still recognize me for what I've done in my younger years. And, uh, I'm happy to keep, uh, on continuing to, uh, inspire the next generation for sure. Thank you very much for having me on the show today. Yes, thank you all for watching this video. Uh, of course, make sure to like, favorite, share, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. See ya.